Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to my Skylake Hackintosh video. This video has been requested for a very long time, ever since I released my first Hackintosh video. That's actually my most popular video on my channel. And in that video, the two things were just requested by a ton of people. One was a step-by-step -step build guide, and I was always reluctant to do that because even if you make a perfect guide, which is super detailed, which we did make, by the way, uh, it's just it's never perfect depending on what parts a person has. There's always some little things that come up that they have to put in effort to, uh, to actually fix and figure out, which is really normal with the Hackintosh. But we did make one, and that is going to be released, and it's actually already up on our Patreon page as just a major thank you to our Patreon supporters. Now, we're just launching this Patreon page, and basically what we want to do is be able to make more videos, make them higher quality, and to keep more gear on hand to do comparisons for you guys, which you guys love. Now, with your support, we can take on less commercial, well-paid work and do... Better, more content and better content for you. So it's just a giant thank you to you guys. And that guide is up there. Now, for just about the price of a coffee a month, you guys can support us and also get bonuses like exclusive videos, such as that build guide, and uh, get uh, videos earlier and other goodies, downloadable content, stuff like that on there. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Now, people have been asking also for an update, which is what this guy is. This is our third one, and it is awesome you guys will see that the price is lower much lower and actually better performance and better temperatures and more flexibility at the same time now before i get into uh, the specs and the video editing performance compared to three actual mac computers the newest ones i want to talk about who's a hackintosh for a hackintosh is not for everybody and not everybody should try to build one if you want to get a computer that's going to have the least issues and when any issues come up and they always do with any system you can go down the street to an apple store and they will fix it for you get you a new one or whatever if you don't like to figure things out or you don't have the time to do so say you're running a business and you just want something that works just spend the money even if it's three times or you know four times as much or whatever and get yourself an actual mac but if you're a person who doesn't have the money, but you still want to run Mac OS, either it's for Final Cut, which is the reason we're on it, or some other software, or you just prefer it, and you uh, don't have the money to buy a Mac, it's a great option. And if you just want the ability to add in internal drives, like a RAID array that you guys are seeing on my other Hackintosh, or a Blu-ray burner, or add in cards, or be able to swap out hardware, just have a lot more customization that you used to have with the older Mac Pros, um, you could still do that with the Hackintosh, but of course you can't do that with all the new Macs. Apple has abandoned that type of philosophy. So that's another reason to build a Hackintosh. Hackintoshes can be really reliable, and this one is actually quite reliable. We've had it for just over six months, and we really haven't had any issues with it. There's been a few little things, such as a USB uh, little Bluetooth chip that kind of is flaking out, but that's not the problem of the system. And the system actually won't turn on with one of our RAID arrays. It's a cheap Chinese $99 array, and we have to make sure that's turned off before the system boots up. I don't know if it would be the same way on a Mac or not, but all our other hard drives and external SSDs and other devices don't have any issues with it. So that's just the two things that kind of came up. Other than that, it's been great, great performance. It runs really cool and quiet, and it is literally like a quarter of the price of a Mac Pro and faster at the same time. So let's go into talking about some parts, but at first I want to give you guys a little teaser. I have a couple systems here, which you guys are probably thinking, what, what is that doing there and what is that? You guys have saw my MacBook Pro comparison, the 15 versus 16 MacBook Pros, and most of you guys watched that and liked it. If you didn't, go check it out. But uh, I've been telling people to not buy MacBook Pros for Premiere for uh, I don't know, probably a few years now. You can get better performance on a Windows computer. So with so many people being disappointed with the Mac Pro, I decided, well, why don't I actually go and test it and have some real world results to back up uh, my claims and my suggestions. So these are the two, in my opinion, best Windows options best alternatives to a MacBook Pro if you want to do editing uh, or if you just need a, a laptop. So decent build quality, good build quality, good performance. This is the Blade, Razer Blade 14 inch with the new 1060 GTX graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM as the max. This has, this is the Dell XPS with the 4K display, same processor as the MacBook Pro in this one and it has 32 gigs of RAM. 
So I'm actually working on testing these computers and comparing them uh, to the MacBook Pro in video editing and as well as actual day-to-day -day use, uh, battery life, keyboard, trackpad, all that good stuff. So if you guys wanna see that, you guys wanna encourage me to spend more time making YouTube videos, hit that like button. The more likes, the faster I'll get it done. And make sure you hit the subscribe button and enable notifications so you guys don't miss out on that video. Now let's talk about the parts and the price inside this Hackintosh. Taking a look at the prices for the Skylake Hackintosh system, you'll see how appealing the system is. And then once you hear the performance numbers, you'll be uh, even more drawn to do a system like this. Just the PC only when I built it was under $1,000. That's with a single GPU. The prices do fluctuate a little bit, so at this current time, it's a little bit higher for the parts, but I have all the parts listed in the description that I used, and these are really the best bang for the buck, best suggested, best compatibility parts, but I'm also gonna have some alternates just in case one's out of stock or the prices are just hiked up because everybody's buying that specific brand. Uh, so you definitely go and check that out. Uh, but the system alone is under $1,000 and even with one graphics card, it's actually faster than the Mac Pro that costs $4,600. Now, I'm gonna be comparing this system with two graphics cards, which is just a little bit more, about $1,100 to the Mac Pro, which is $4,600, since that's the most comparable. As you guys see, there's also a MacBook Pro on here. This is the latest model with the AMD 460 graphics card, which is the highest graphics card option. And there's also an iMac with the same processor as it's that is in here, and the best graphics card and RAM options, which is $3,400. Uh, so I'll be focusing on the Mac Pro, but there's gonna be speeds and tests and benchmarks for uh, these other systems as well, just in case you're comparing to that. Now, uh, on the price here, I also have a total build as a, like a kit, and if you're comparing to the iMac, I added this in here. So in here we have a 4K Dell, 99% sRGB IPS monitor, it's a great monitor, an Apple keyboard and mouse, and a USB digital audio converter, which I suggest because it's just less hassle and better quality um, than using the onboard audio. And when I built it, it was $1,548 compared to $3,400 for the iMac. Right now the prices have went up just a little bit, but it, it fluctuates, goes higher and lower. So even compared to an iMac, you'll see it runs cooler, it has better performance, and it's less Less expensive at the same time. Before we go into video editing, I wanna speak just a little bit about the specific parts. Now, some of the parts don't matter what you choose, such as the RAM, the SSD, and the power supply, and the case, and the water cooling system. Those parts really don't matter. You could choose what you like. I'm gonna have a full parts list in the description along with alternates that are either just different options or lower prices. Um, so you guys can check all those links out in the video description. What really matters mainly for the Hackintosh compatibility is your motherboard. So I'll put the one that I used along with a couple different options that were great. I suggest Gigabyte, they have the best compatibility with the least issues. Now, along with the motherboard, they do have audio that you can get working on Hackintoshes. Just on some systems and some motherboards, they work perfectly on others. Um, sometimes they turn off. Basically, you have to just reinstall the driver, which is not a big deal. But my suggestion is to spend a little bit more money and get a USB audio device. It sounds better. You just plug it in. No issues. No audio drivers to mess around with. And I think it's definitely worth the money. So I'll have a link to that in the description below. Now, the CPU that I chose is the 6700. K. It's an i7, the latest Skylake processor, same one that's in the iMac. There's a couple of reasons for it. One, it's the best bang for the buck processor, and it runs really cool and it runs really fast. Now, we have ours overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz, which is not a high overclock, uh, but it's just literally one setting in the BIOS, and it runs really fast, and we have a water cooling setup here. It's just a simple, small, all-in-one water cooling kit. We show you how to install and put it together, and it's only 60 bucks. If you don't wanna do that, you can get an air-cooled solution, which I'll have a link to, uh, but I suggest you. it's really quiet and it runs a system really cool. Now, another thing that does matter for compatibility is the graphics card. We are using AMD graphics cards. It's the 280X in here, and right now we have two of them in here. Now, there's a couple reasons we're using them. One, they work really fast for Final Cut, and this specific graphics card is actually uh, the same one that is in the Mac Pro, the D700s, which are a $1,000 option. Um, so they're really fast, and they are older, and they don't make them new anymore, but you can still buy them on 
on Amazon, new and used, and my suggestion is just getting them on Craigslist because you can pick one up for $100, maybe even less. Um, so the prices are usually between $100 to $150 in that range. Now the biggest reason I use it is the compatibility. You literally you stick it in the system, you don't have to install anything, modify anything, do any kecks, you put it in and it just works perfectly because Apple actually uses these graphics cards in the Mac Pro. So they work great and there are no issues. Now you can use Nvidia graphics cards, but there are some additional steps and some driver downloads and when you update the system, you have to download drivers uh, at the same time each time you do it. Uh, so it's a little more hassle and if you're using Final Cut, it's not as fast as these AMD older graphics cards. So I suggest these, uh, but you can use um, an Nvidia card and we do show you how to use it in our step-by-step -step installation guide. Now what you guys have been waiting for is benchmarks and video editing. Now before I touch on this topic, I want to mention that I'm going to focus on the Skylake Hackintosh with the two graphics cards just because it's the best bang for the buck if you're using Final Cut. If you're using Premiere Pro, one graphics card works just fine because Premiere doesn't really make good use of that second graphics card. But in these results, you're going to see a number of different uh, categories and options. You're going to see the three newest uh, Macs, which is the Mac Pro, which is 4600, the iMac, which has the the best graphics and, and processor and 32 gigs of RAM, which is $3,400. And then you're gonna see the latest MacBook Pro, which has the Radeon 460, the best graphics card option in there, which is 2,600 with the base SSD. So you're gonna see all those, the latest Macs compared to this Hackintosh, but you're also, depending on the test, gonna see multiple Hackintosh configurations, just depending on what you wanna do, either a single graphics card or two graphics cards. And you're also gonna see a quick sync setting, which is one graphic graphics card and uh, what quick sync is if you don't know what it is it's, it speeds up your your export of the file it doesn't make the video editing any faster or smoothness any better it just makes the actual file be able to be saved faster. Now, I don't suggest this. Uh, you can get it to work in the Hackintosh, and I did get it to work, but you have to do some different tweaking. You have to have the onboard graphics enabled, and then you have to boot to that first, and then switch to the graphics card, and there's some glitches and stuff like that, so it's just really not worth it. It's better to have faster editing performance, in my opinion, and just slower save times, uh, because when you're saving, you just do something else. But if you're comparing it directly to an iMac and you wanna see how those two compare, because the iMac and the MacBook Pro do use Quick Sync, you guys could take a look at that Skylake Quick Sync option. But like I said, I'll be comparing it uh, to the Mac Pro since they both have uh, two graphics cards and they don't use the Quick Sync settings. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is Geekbench 4. This is the latest Geekbench benchmark. And taking a look at CPU, the single core performance is about 40% faster than the Mac Pro. Um, I was not expecting it to be this fast. 5,227. This is better than all, basically anything else out there, unless you have the same CPU uh, with a higher overclock. It just is it's doing great in single core performance. So if you're doing photo editing, this is gonna be really quick. Now, multi-core, I was even more impressed here because the Mac Pro has six cores. It's a six-core Xeon chip. And this Hackintosh with a four core is faster, about 11% faster, 18,165 score. Uh, so just the newer processor, newer efficiencies of that processor and the faster speed really just put it over the top. Now Geekbench 4 also has a GPU benchmark, a graphics benchmark. Here we see we have about 13% 30, faster speeds. Even though this computer is using the same graphics cards, it, uh, it just clocked a little bit faster. The Mac Pro has to slow them down a little bit because it, it has to keep itself cooler. This score here, as you're seeing, it's 103,000. That's just for a single graphics card because it only tests one at a time. So if you have two, you double that if you're comparing it to an iMac or a MacBook Pro. The next thing we're taking a look at is Cinebench, which is a rendering benchmark that relates to video editing. In the CPU benchmark portion, the Skylake Hackintosh is faster, even though it's a four core compared to a six core. Um, I expected it to be close, but I didn't expect it to be faster. If we're looking at the graphics option, uh, we're getting about 47% faster graphics performance compared to the Mac Pro. Now, a couple of reasons for this. One, um, video editing, the graphics performance 
performance is tied to the CPU. So if the CPU is faster, the graphics uh, can be faster as well, and these graphics cards run faster. So this score here, if you're comparing it to the iMac or MacBook Pro, once again, is only for one card, so you can double that if you have two graphics cards. And we're gonna take a look at Unigen Heaven. Uh, Unigen Heaven is like a gaming benchmark. It's only using one graphics card again, uh, but you see uh, very similar scores to the Mac Pro, just slightly faster. So these are just synthetic benchmarks so now let's take a look at uh, some temp tests and fan speed tests. This test right here is converting H.265 footage to ProRes. Now this maxes out the CPUs completely and it's gonna kick the heat up and it's gonna kick the fans up and show you how the system performs over time on a high CPU load. So looking at the Skylake Hackintosh, it's running at 4.5 gigahertz at 65 degrees Celsius, 30 seconds into the test at 20% fan speed, which is idle. It's just uh, idle speed. You can barely hear in a quiet in a quiet room, you hear like a small hum, it's not bad at all. And with any other noise, you don't even notice it. The Mac Pro is at 3.6 gigahertz. It's turbo boost at 57 degrees Celsius. So a little bit cooler initially at 10%. Now this is at idle fan speed at the same time, completely silent. Now five Five minutes into the test, our Skylake system hasn't changed. Completely idle, 65 degrees Celsius. And this is where the system really rocks at. Even if overclocked, it just stays really cool and just really quiet, no matter how long you run the system. The Mac Pro did uh, heat up a little bit and the fan speed is still at idle. After 15 minutes, the Skylake Hackintosh doesn't care. 65 degrees Celsius at idle, full speed. And the Mac Pro actually had to slow down slightly on the turbo boost and it actually warmed up to 85 degrees Celsius and kicked up the fans to a little bit louder than uh, what this system would be. Now the Mac Pro still is, it's a really quiet system and it's not gonna get too hot running it for hours and hours, which is why a lot of people spend so much money on these systems compared to like iMacs or MacBook Pros that do get really quite hot and they can't turbo boost as fast. You see the iMac is just running like a jet. It's a 90 to 95% fan speed and it's just getting, it's not overheating, but it's getting close where the Skylake system doesn't care it just it just goes full speed ahead. Now, if you're doing some conversions, what about speeds of that conversion? So the Skylake Hackintosh, a minute and 54 seconds to do a 1080p clip to ProRes compared to 201. Not a huge difference, but this is a small clip. So if you're doing more, you're gonna, uh, it's gonna matter more to you. Uh, for a 4K file, two minutes, 49 seconds compared to 333, seeing a little bit more of a difference there. And then converting that ProRes back to H.265, we have six minutes, 37 seconds compared to 801. So in conversion, you're seeing those, the CPU speeds and the benchmarks do come through when you're working with some video files. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is Bruce X. And this is a Final Cut benchmark that tests the rendering speed of your system. It's just a free project file you can download and if you follow the descriptions you can test how fast your system is so if you're trying to compare your macbook or your imac or whatever you have to the skylake system download that and run it in final cut and see how it compares to this system so my skylake with the two graphics cards did 14 seconds compared to 16 seconds on the mac pro both of these are really fast so you can see the macbook pro is 45 seconds it does not have the same horsepower as these systems here the next thing we're gonna take a look at is stabilization test. Now we use stabilization quite a bit, smoothing out some slider shots or some uh, gimbal shots, or even using monopods with longer lenses need just a little bit of stabilization. So this is definitely helpful. Looking at Final Cut, you see that uh, we have nine seconds and 24 seconds to render uh, on the Skylake Hackintosh compared to 10 seconds and 26 seconds to render on the Mac Pro. Not a huge difference at all, uh, but there is some improvement. Now taking a look at Premiere Pro, same 20 second 4K clip, uh, we're looking at four minutes and one second on the Skylake regardless of a single or dual graphics card because Premiere doesn't really make good use of a second graphics card. Now you see the asterisk there, and what that means is it's not a completely perfect number. Um, because I don't have the Mac Pro anymore, um, I sold my $5,000 Mac Pro and I built a Hackintosh, and I don't have an iMac either, but these numbers should be relatively close to what it would get. The reason why that's there is uh, they've been some operating system updates and there have been a newer versions of Final Cut and Premiere Pro, so it's not gonna be perfect, but that should be relatively close um, for the numbers. 
Now we're gonna take a look at some video rendering and exporting tests. These are some standardized benchmarks that I've put together so I can compare different systems in, on different platforms. The first thing is gonna be a five minute 1080p clip with two LUTs and film grain applied uh, unrendered, so the system has to render it and then export it. So here, taking a look at it, you see we have about 35% faster performance in Final Cut comparing the Hackintosh to the Mac Pro and about 39% faster in Premiere Pro. So those benchmarks uh, are really coming through on the video editing side. And looking at the 4K, this is uh, same type of thing, two LUTs and film grain applied, but it's a five minute 4K clip. We're getting about 19% faster performance in Final Cut and about 18% faster performance in Premiere Pro. And if you guys wanna see uh, those tests on the iMac or co comparing it to the MacBook Pro, just hit that pause and you guys could check out those numbers. Now we're gonna go into something that's a lot more difficult. This is a 4K project file and we're taking four 4K clips and downsampling them all to fit on screen at the same time. And two of those clips are actually reversed and all of them have two LUTs and film grain applied. So this is very difficult for the computer to do and it's especially difficult for the graphics cards in these systems. So here we're getting about 25% faster performance on the dual graphics card Hackintosh compared to the $4,600 Mac Pro and about 40% faster performance in Premiere Pro. So definitely some good improvements. Now along with that, um, I have some uh, smoothness differences. This is something I just recently started to do. It's not rendering or, or exporting, anything like that. It's just timeline smoothness. And unfortunately, I don't have any results on the Mac Pro or the, the iMac because I don't have those systems to test out. So I just have my Hackintosh with the latest MacBook Pro uh, using the best graphics. Using the 4K in Premiere Pro, uh, we have a quarter res is the max we could do on the MacBook Pro without rendering. So this is not bad, it's still a 1080p image file, looks good, you can edit with it no problem. But on the Hackintosh, we could do half resolution coming from a 4K clip. So it just handles uh, a smoother timeline basically without dropping frames. Uh, now in Final Cut, it's a little bit different. Final Cut, you can't choose the resolution. You can either choose uh, full quality, full, full 4K playback, or uh, a faster performance setting, which kind of makes the image not as sharp and it's hard to judge focus on, but it runs really smooth, really almost on anything. So this is in the best, better uh, image quality selection. So it's reading back full 4K, and this also has two LUTs and film grain applied. Now the MacBook Pro can handle one LUT and film grain without having the background rendering on. So no background rendering. Um, and the Skylake Hackintosh with one graphics card could do two LUTs and, and film grain and the dual graphics card options can do three LUTs and film grain without having background rendering. So hopefully all those numbers made sense and this was interesting enough for you. You can see how a Hackintosh that's about a quarter of the price of a Mac Pro outperforms it and actually stays cooler at the same time. Very impressive. And if you want to compare it to an iMac, you can add in a 4K screen, all the accessories that come with the iMac and it's about half the price and similar performance, actually slightly better performance at the same time. So uh, it's a very impressive system. It's not for everybody, but it, it would work for a lot of people, giving you faster speeds, much lower costs, and more flexibility with internal components and, and different parts that you get to choose. So uh, if you guys wanna know how to build this and wanna see that step-by-step -step video guide showing us literally unboxing the different packages and putting the stuff into the case and getting the operating system, making the USB drives and installing it, going through the BIOS, literally step by step on how you guys can do this. You guys can find a preview video on our channel that I uploaded at the same time as this video, just explaining a little bit more and if it's right for you and giving some previews there. And if you guys are interested, you guys can support us on Patreon. Uh, you'll be able to have access to that exclusive video along with at least 11 other videos in the next year that are exclusive to Patreon early access to videos and um, sp basically giveaways that we're gonna do and a lot of extra bonuses for the price of a cup of coffee a month. And we'll be able to make more videos and better videos for you guys. So that's what we love to do, that's what we wanna do. And with your guys' support, um, we could just 
to take everything up to another level. So if you guys enjoy this video, hit that like button, make sure you guys subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss out on that MacBook Pro versus Dell XPS and the Razer Blade 14 video. I think it's gonna be a very, very interesting video and you guys are gonna enjoy that. Do you guys have any questions you guys can ask in that comment section below? I'll do my best to, to answer it, but I can't really offer building advice. Um, there's a lot of great free content on the internet about that. And once again, I'll have the links to all the parts that I use along with alternates in the video description as well. So you guys can go and check that out. Let me know what you guys think of this system. Is this something that you guys are interested in? If you have a Hackintosh system, comment You know what you guys have and how you like it. And um, just, I'm, I'm excited to hear your guys' thoughts on this video and on the system right here. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.